Hello everyone, welcome back to Zeros TV and another monthly update with Ivan Chosevich from Breakout Point. Ivan, thank you so much for coming back on. Thanks for having me, Max. Nice to see you again in 2022. Great to see you in this new year. Well, that's one of the things we started out doing in 2021 that I'm excited to continue with here in 2022. And that's having you on to give a monthly update of what Breakout Point has been tracking in developments in the activist short selling world and increasingly as well in the retail trading world as those universes collide with each other. Traditionally, it has been the short sellers versus the retail traders. But in January, with broader market weakness, it seems like those worlds are actually combining and maybe aligning their interests a little bit. Uh, that's, a, that's a good observation, Max. Uh, and actually, we did uh, uh, have a, a number of uh, factors uh, that I think uh, contributed uh, to this. So uh, basically, uh, retail investors uh, accepting or embracing short selling uh, uh, more than before. So uh, one of the uh, factors is uh, basically popular retail teams going down a lot, so such as uh, uh, IRK uh, ETF or some uh, OG meme stocks such as AMC, GME, uh, or popular narratives such as EVs or SPACs uh, down, uh, are uh, broadly down. And I think many retail investors are basically looking at the charts, charts seeing, uh, seeing all these weakness and realizing, okay, there is some uh, uh, opportunity on uh, the short side as well. Interesting development is also on ETF side. So we have seen what we call kind of first meme ETF or meme short, uh, which came from kind of unexpected place. So short arc ETF that uh, made uh, many rounds on Wall Street bets and uh, uh, many got excited about it and uh, uh, realized better how this offers uh, uh, some hedging opportunities uh, for, for many and uh, uh, so on. So basically, these are, uh, these are some developments that we have seen and there is much more really on our, based on our estimates, much more of put to talk than before and it is much more balanced for options trader in retail world with the call call talk so call talk has been uh, traditionally dominating seeing put talk now uh, not maybe equal but uh, also not that far from call talk call talk among retail investors is uh, is amazing development for us last but not the least in these days we are seeing a lot of uh, inverse uh, uh, kramer uh, jim kramer etf talk uh, so let's see maybe there is some uh, uh, another short etf in the making there well he definitely he definitely i believe he literally poured gasoline on the short arc fire um on his show so I, i'm sure that that had something to do with it, and then we saw ARK squeeze right back up. The ARK Innovation Fund is listing down 30% for the year. See, this is my ARK Innovation, right? Uh, and it's, that's, it had another drubbing today. If you think it's headed further down, the cynical geniuses who prey on investors in the form of ETFs have come up with a way to bet against Kathy Wood herself. It's called the Tuttle Capital Short Innovation ETF. Its symbol is SARK, S-A-R-K, and it literally shorts whatever uh, Kathy goes along. It's it, frankly too cruel even for me. But man, I want to think of the SARK ETF as the scotch that happened to be my parents' choice. SARK? As in Cuddy Sark. Yep, you can buy some Sark and hedge your position. If you're worried this correction will continue, then stay the course in the stocks that are holding up, and then you use this thing to bet against the growth stocks that are the center of the blast radius. Yark! Now, I don't want this to turn to some kind of like claymation death match like we saw a year ago today with GameStop, where the longs literally set out to crush a bunch of short selling hedge funds. When you're picking stocks, please don't make it personal. That said, I need you to remember that what's going on here now. The Fed could be uh, tougher than expected. Jay is not trying to bring down the ARC. He's not trying to sink it. It's simply collateral damage from his fight to get inflation under control. I've been in this business for 40 years, and I can tell you that these growth stocks are the ones that get hit hardest in a tightening cycle. So here's the bottom line. Now you know how to bet with POW if you think that Jay Powell wants to destroy the economy. You pour the SARC over the ARC, and you bet that they all drown. And no one gets out alive.
Related to that put talk versus call talk, oftentimes with the calls, it's individual names that people are talking about, calls on a specific company. When you look at the put talk, is it finding its way to individual names or are they still looking at, not that you would buy puts on the short ARK ETF, but are they looking at puts on ETFs, puts on indices, or are they actually looking at individual companies, which maybe they had been buying calls on before? I would say it's uh, uh, more on uh, ETF uh, side, and we do see uh, a lot on uh, uh, SPY, so uh, S and P uh, 500 uh, uh, ETF. Uh, uh, we a lot of we see a lot of balance there, but we are also seeing uh, more put talk just on uh, some uh, specific names being uh, uh, thrown around, and uh, you know it's something that we haven't seen uh, definitely uh, in uh, January last year <laughs> when it was. Uh, basically unexistent. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing that I think is interesting is we, we started out actually talking about the retail traders today. Normally, we start with the short sellers and all the action that has come out in terms of new reports, but there haven't really been that many reports. It's been a slow January. How many reports have you tracked that fit into your major report breaking category? Sure. So it has been a slow start and we have seen uh, in uh, January uh, seven new major uh, uh, short calls and reports uh, and this compares to 17 in uh, January 2021. So that's significantly less uh, and uh, part of the reasons uh, uh, lie in uh, these overall market weakness. I think uh, Scorpion Capital was on Zeros recently talked to you and uh, mentioned how they actually hate this environment. Maybe you can uh, recap uh, wh why is that? Because I think that reflects very well the sentiment uh, at uh, uh, many uh, activist short, short sellers. Well, I think it's pretty interesting to highlight, uh, you know, seven reports this January versus 17 last year. So in both scenarios, when the market is crashing and when the market is ripping higher, short sellers are worried about getting squeezed and the risk of a short squeeze. And nobody really wants to be chasing names lower because um, a lot of times, as we've seen in environments like this and in regular environments, you're really unsure whether the the report is going to result in the stock selling off or sometimes the stock squeezing in your face, in the face of the short seller. And so when, when a name you've been doing work on is down 30, 40, sometimes even 50% over the, the course of a month or two, uh, short sellers are reticent to go out there with that research in spite of all the hard work they've put into it. And I think that's exactly what you saw in terms of reports coming out. But uh, in spite of that, some people did still publish. So I, I'm interested to hear what worked, what didn't, and uh, what activist short sellers are, are braving these waters. Indeed. Uh, so uh, coming uh, back then uh, to what uh, has been uh, published indeed. So seven uh, new major reports, as I mentioned, uh, I would I would like to maybe highlight uh, three of those. First, it was uh, it is a, a report by Bleaker Research. So Bleaker Research basically reactivated uh, their activist uh, uh, short selling research last year, achieved uh, quite a good deal of success last year. And this year, already January, they published their first report. So it's on a uh, uh, Chinese uh, US listed uh, company uh, Daku Energy and uh, uh, they published some very heavy uh, allegations. The stock uh, uh, comparably didn't uh, react uh, uh, so much. I believe it's down about uh, uh, 7% at the time as we speak, but the allegations are heavy, also relate uh, to some uh, uh, forced labor by uh, uh, parties that are uh, related to DACO energy. So we are interested to see how that further develops. Yeah. Uh, and as well, I mean, they came out with that report sort of right before we saw this recent squeeze higher, um, certainly right in the face of the storm there. Um, who else came out with reports besides Bleecker Street? Spruce Point, uh, so very active uh, activist uh, publishing on uh, uh, Taskas. So that was very interesting as uh, actually the upper uh, downside price target of uh, Spruce Point uh, uh, has been reached uh, basically within minutes of publishing of reports. So stock quickly plummeted uh, uh, more than 25% and 25% downside has been upper upper target of uh, uh, Spruce Point. So that has certainly been... <laughs> 
uh, the uh, quickest quickest one uh, to reach uh, so far in 2022 uh, uh, the price target and uh, let's see if anyone <laughs> achieves similar uh, similar success at least in that term well some of the short reports from last year obviously have have not been spared during this broader market sell off um you know you tracked i i think it was you know over 100 uh, reports that came out last year. How did last year's targets fare in January? Yeah, so they did uh, uh, went uh, further down. I believe at the end of the year, uh, on average, uh, 2021 uh, short uh, uh, report or the, the shares uh, in focus of short reports were down about 42%. Now, as we speak, they are down uh, about 50%. So they further declined. But this decline comparably maybe did slow down uh, compared uh, to uh, Q4 uh, when they were maybe leading, uh, leading leading the pack on the short side. So what is happening with the short targets has sort of maybe spread out to the broader market. And we're seeing, uh, I think, a good uh, benchmark that a lot of people were comparing baskets of Activist short seller to was ARK. You know, was it better to to choose the stock selection of the Activist short seller or to just let uh, let Kathy do the stock selecting for you and just short ARK? And at least in 2021, the short sellers uh, did provide some alpha over that ARK basket. Um, but since January, it looks like ARK and, and some of the other names outside of the ARK basket have started to catch up. In, in, indeed, so on this very short uh, time sample of, of January, uh, that has been the case, and ARK uh, 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 did, uh, so to say, catch up and overtook uh, the short target. But uh, again, the many short targets did already uh, lose uh, a lot uh, uh, in share prices and did went down a lot. So it is also partly at least uh, expected uh, uh, development. All right. Well, I know that there are a couple of names that we actually talked about on Zeros that have started to feel some pressure. One in particular was J Capital Research. And there have also been some interesting developments beyond just the share price. Um, what happened there with, with uh, Faraday Future and, and J Capital's research there? Yeah, the uh, uh, Faraday Future... Uh, J Capital uh, did uh, publish a report and also uh, talked on uh, a zero sum chopping block uh, about uh, Faraday Future in October last year, I believe. And uh, the latest uh, development there is that actually Charma, uh, chairman of this uh, EV startup uh, stepped down based on internal investigations that concluded uh, basically investors might have been mes misled about uh, pre-orders. And this is a vindication basically for uh, uh, J Capital research, also in terms of share prices, which are now down about 50% since J Capital talked uh, uh, to you on the chopping block. Yeah, that one was quite perplexing. I mean, you had a, a founder who is banned from capital markets in China, yet listing his company on the NASDAQ. And obviously, we follow everything that we publish here on Zeros very closely, especially on the days it goes out. And the market uh, seemed to shrug that one off. Um, but but since then, it looks like the research that J Capital put out has has since caught up with them. So always interesting to see how how things move over time. Well, let, let's look forward to February. Uh, we're a few days into February. I don't know if we've had any activist short reports published, but what are you looking forward to in the month of February? And then we can we can look forward a little bit further to the rest of 2022. Yes, yeah, so we have seen uh, uh, now at the very start of February uh, a first uh, uh, first report, uh, actually Fuzzy Panda, so uh, anonymous uh, uh, publisher published on uh, uh, one uh, EV stock uh, published at very unusual uh, unusual moment because the stock did uh, uh, plunge in the pre market already before the report due to some fundamental news about the stock. So le uh, very much interested to see how that one uh, further develops uh, and in terms of new topics uh, and uh, what uh, short sellers uh, might be looking at. I think it will be to some extent extension of previous year, so probably a lot of uh, uh, specs uh, uh, and uh, again, a never ending uh, China hustle pool of uh, uh, new ideas. Uh, but uh, we do also expect to see some new narratives, some new ideas uh, popping up that's usually it is the case that throughout the year a new narrative takes over and activist short sellers get particularly successful in it, which motivates then further uh, players from the area to investigate in similar stocks in peers and find out 
find new ideas from the area. So let's see, what will that be? It might be too early for us to to judge on that. Yeah, and what about those retail traders? Uh, do you think that this infatuation with short selling has legs, or do you think they'll find themselves back to being long biased uh, uh, as soon as as soon as the market uh, gives them the, the heads up? Yeah, I think it's less about them uh, about them uh, stopping to be longer biased. I, uh, I do expect them to be to to have this uh, uh, bias still, but. Uh, uh, again, uh, uh, them embracing uh, short selling and uh, uh, not uh, always uh, criticizing it and uh, uh, embracing it via their uh, trading activities, I think, is also there to stay. Uh, retail investor has, be, has uh, been evolving throughout the time. So we have seen uh, different different narratives, different topics. They are you know, experimental. They like to try. And uh, uh, as long as they continue to find uh, uh, short opportunities, they will uh, be uh, ready to embrace uh, that uh, even on persistent or, or on persistent basis or on uh, occasional and, uh, and uh, you know, semi-regular basis. All right, Ivan. Well, thank you so much for coming back on. Maybe the market will provide us a little bit more fodder, more reports for us to discuss next time, but looking forward to talking to you again in a month. Definitely. Thank you so much, Max. Bye-bye. 